está pasando mi gente? Welcome to another episode of The Crossroads. Today I have a special guest, Timothy from Nuestra Patria PR. I've been following your page for a while, my brother, and uh, I see beautiful things there because it shows, right, the struggle that Puerto Rico goes through in a lot of ways, right, politically, economically. It says a lot of truths, and I've been wanting to speak to you about it, especially after this referendum thing going on in the, you know, House of Representatives in the U.S. You know, I wanted for you to be on this podcast so we could uh, speak to the diaspora because you live in, in New York, is it, or Philly? Uh, New York. New York. Okay. But you were raised in Philadelphia, right? Yes, sir. It's time to connect some dots because there's a lot of people in the continental U.S. that are from Puerto Rico or have that heritage that understand what's going on really, right, and have a lot to say. And I think it's time for us to organize and uh, do something about this reality of ours, right? Because if not, if we continue to be disorganized and not interested in these issues, our future is not going to be that bright. So I think it's time to uh, grab, you know, the bull by the horns, have these conversations, regardless of how difficult they may be and, and move forward, man. You know, talk about yourself a little bit. Tell us about your uh, background history and how you got so interested in uh, Puerto Rican history, living in the U.S. Because sometimes people from the island, especially, right? Y vamos a hablar bilingüe hoy, because, you know, we're both bilingual. And I know that you like your, your Spanglish, and, and I love to hear that, too. Some people criticize it, but in the end of the day, man, <laughs> we have to express ourselves how we can. So let's get it, man. Let's get it. Right. Tell, tell us about yourself and how you got so interested in, in Puerto Rico the way you are. Um, so, you know, I grew up in, I was born here in, in New York. Um, then my mother took us to Philly. Anyway, we, we were raised in Philly. Um, y la cuestión de, like, Spanglish, why I love it too, is because, like, it, it's it's our first language, right? When we start talking about certain things or certain elements about who we are uh, in as diaspora Ricans, um, a lot of us did grow up, like, uh, I'm an 80s baby, right? So my mother got, my mother came here in the 70s, and her first language is Spanish, that's Still to this day, she has a heavy ass accent. Her English is not very good looking, although she <laughs> does uh, prefer to speak to me in English and I'm the one speaking to her in Spanish now. Weird mix. Um, but, you know, again, uh, how I became interested in the history was uh, I, I didn't grow up knowing it, right? I didn't grow up learning it. It wasn't a uh, subject of conversation in my household. I knew I was Boricua because we had the flags all over the house. Literally, my mom and dad created a, remember when the beads were in style? La, la, la cortina de los beads. Yeah. They made a, a cortina of beads that was a Puerto Rican flag. And I remember sitting there working on it for hours and days. Uh, so we had it perfect to fit the doorway. Um, so I, I, I always knew I was uh, Boricua, but I didn't uh, accept that because also growing up here in the diaspora to certain families, there is a, a protection of that identity. But la, nacimos en la isla, so somos de la isla, ustedes son nacidos acá. Well, you're from over here. You're not Puerto Rican. You guys are American. Uh, So it was one of those things that uh, for a long time, I didn't accept the full reality of my identity. Like, again, I knew I was Puerto Rican. You would ask me, I'd be like, yo, I'm Puerto Rican. Uh, pero I didn't know what it was, right? Like, to, to sum it up, I didn't know who I was. I didn't know what I was. I knew I was Puerto Rican. Um, so my interest came behind organizing. Um, it was, uh, I had moved from Philadelphia uh, back to New York. Um, and it was just, a, I was... I wanted a change in life. You know, you grow up in Philly, you grow up somewhere so long, you kind of feel stuck uh, or you're not progressing. So it was one of those things. Let me try something new. I met Tirapaca. And I landed in these spaces where there was beautiful people uh, doing beautiful work. And uh, it was a lot of move, uh, work around the Black Lives Matter movement. And um, I started learning African American culture and African American history. And it was one of those things that it's like, yo, like, devil, this is amazing. Like, you know, the, the strides that they've made uh, here in this country. And uh, like, what did we do? And learning that we were so heavily influenced too, especially what he was in the, in the diaspora um, to create change behind like the Black Lives Matter movement. It was it was that, it was that defining moment to me. It was like, what what did we do here? Uh, and how did we get to where we are? ¿verdad? Porque uno mira los boricua aquí en este país and it's just like, oh, estamos chilling, but like we, we're, we're citizens, so everything is cool, y, y estamos bien, and it, that's far from the reality. Um, so in, in learning and in organizing through a specific community around certain things, um, you know, I, I used to do housing organizing and all this other shit, yo vi la comunidad de nosotros, and it was just like, why are we in all these positions? Why here, verdad, especialmente aquí, que son mucho boricua de esa época, de, de la época de mi mamá, que llegaron en los 70, que están either 
almost living in a shelter or ya están ahí que, que, you know, they've been displaced from here. And I worked with that community and seeing that and hearing their stories and being like, yo, like, you know. So uh, I, I became very passionate because I've seen a struggle here. And it's like, why? Like, we, why? <laughs> you know, why? Uh, so I, I impressed my process. And I just started studying and researching. And I figured if I didn't know this, a lot of people didn't know this. So for us not to know that history or to have a connection to that history, uh, it's very, like, it was very impactful to me. It was very eye-opening because it's just like, again, I was in my early 20s and it was just like, I've never heard of this stuff. Why? Uh, so again, that was that was the overall. Like I, I brought it to the people because I didn't know. So I knew that a lot of people didn't know and it was important to have these conversations and to know where we come from. Like the people in Puerto Rico uh, who influenced us here and vice versa, because we have in the diaspora influenced a lot of culture and a lot of movement in Puerto Rico también. Uh, so, you know, it was just time for somewhere for all of that to kind of connect and it just so happened that it ended up being that page. It's cool to see the uh, dynamics of how how our relationship is with our colonial power, but then seeing it represented in a family, right? For example, your mother would speak to you in English, trying to assimilate the culture, right? Mm -hmm. I live in the U.S. I'm here. My kids are being raised here. They were born here. So let me try learn English and speak to them in English. But here you are decolonizing yourself learning your history as a Puerto Rican and speaking to her in Spanish. You know, eh, y para aquella persona, especialmente en Puerto Rico, que critique, ¿no? Estos boricos hablando inglés. Tenemos que entender, hermano, que ambos, ambos idiomas son impuestos. <laughs> Tú sí. sabes, impuestos colonialmente. El boricua no se inventó el español. You know, el boricua sí, you know, they develop their own Spanish, like every other country has, right? That has been influenced or colonized by Spain. You know, we do have our dialects. We do have certain words that others don't use. Exactly. But in the end of the day is an impulse um, language. So is English. Right. So I think for us to really um, continue our decolonizing process, um, you know, right now they're assembling again the uh, the Arawak language, for example. There's some words that survived. And right, there's right, others right. that is being um, introduced. And there's some people just talking full Arawak. It's amazing, yeah. man. It's amazing. Man, yeah, you've been through a lot. You've been through a lot, not knowing who you were mm -hmm. and then understanding uh, Puerto Rico's history and then seeing it manifested right in real time because we continue to produce history, obviously. Right. Right, right now we're facing this uh, this vote in the U.S. Uh, House of Representatives on how they voted for a referendum again for Puerto Rico to decide their status. And it's funny how they say this is the only one or the first one ever. <laughs> I'm right. like, hold on a minute. You know, there was one in 2020. There was one in 2017. Uh, you know, there was one in 98, another in 93. You know, the first one was in 67. So I don't know what these people were talking about. You know, Pero again, el primero que, que ellos están orchestrating y, y utilizando nuestra gente en la diapora, ¿verdad? Because you're, you're weaponizing this whole context of we're including y'all in the conversation now. And it's like, look, it's 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 by y'all. And it's like, no, these people don't represent us either. <laughs> you know, like, so, yeah, it, it is, it's it's comical in, in a sense to how they're doing this. Yeah, yeah. So we, we approach the situation in different ways. Obviously, you were raised in the U.S. I was raised in Puerto Rico even though I was born in, in, in Buffalo, New York, right? Then I studied history. I did my master's, I did my doctorate, and I was mind blown on how history is produced, right? And a lot of history that is not talked about, about us in the island and the diaspora's participation in Puerto Rico's liberation. We need to understand, man, that there's a lot of folks in the U.S. that live here, right? That have been for Puerto Rico's liberation and have organized as well for that, right? Oscar Lopez, por ejemplo, eh, en Chicago mucho, mucho tiempo, ¿no? Eh, y eso es sin contar todos los macheteros que viajaban y, y hacían sus misiones, ¿no? Y vivían right. en, la, en la diáspora. Los young lords did a lot of work, you know? So um, these are things that we have to uh, take under consideration. Lolita Lebron, like we talked uh, off air, how she visited a bunch of communities in Chicago, New York, Philly. You know, she was highly respected, you know? So, um, yeah, man. So tell me about... Nuestra Patria, right? This is a page you have on Instagram only? Uh, yeah, it's only on Instagram. It was something that, again, it, it manifested out of nowhere. And it was, you know, literally I was putting up a picture and the basic history of what I had found out. Uh, and I, I remember one of the first posts, um, I believe it was about Ocal, uh, because one of my first interactions here with uh, 
the Puerto Rican left or like the Puerto Rican movements or whatever it was, was La Lucha Pava de Puerto Rican, um, you know, and uh, it was uh, the biggest one that they had had in, in Nueva York. And I remember I showed up to that event and it was like, one, wow, there was mad Puerto Ricans, <laughs> mad Puerto Ricans. I was like, oh, crap, wow. Uh, pero, you know, to to <clears throat> share that post and be like, you know, this is who this person is and just put it out there. I didn't have no followers at the time either. It wasn't like, oh, I had a thousand followers already or, or conviti- like I changed the page because I knew, oh, this is what people want. It was literally like, yo, I don't know this shit. I know people are going to look for it. And like, boom, here it is. Um, so Netra Patria was solely an Instagram thing. Um, it also came out around the conception of Instagram. So it was one of those platforms that was first available for us to share, um, like this type of information. So se quedó ahí en verdad, because I didn't really feel the need. I'm not a, a public speaker, so I don't, I'm not a TikToker, <laughs> they, yeah. you know, so, so si se quedó on Instagram, because that's where I feel like I can share. Uh, the most content in one spot without having to break it up in little chunks. Because also another thing I understand is that we're human. Uh, people don't like to read too much. Uh, people would prefer a video or audio versus having to actually read. I mean, understanding certain limitations that we have as humans um, and the the ability to read and things of that nature. Um, so, you know, and understanding those concepts as well, you know, I'm, I'm doing more things where we are speaking and, and stuff like that. But yes, I go on Instagram. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And you have a huge following, you know, it's been growing and, uh, people are interested in, um, you know, knowing your opinion, right. Or hearing your opinion on things. And let's go with something a little recent, right? The house of representatives in the U S voted in favor for a referendum, right? Um, the first one that they orchestrated you you described it as, and, um, I'm like, you know what? I don't know why we waste our time on this, right? Because it still includes the option of quote unquote free association. It does have statehood, it does have independence, but it has that other option, right? That third option that complicates everything in Puerto Rico, right? It uh, represents colonization, right? Even though we may be free tomorrow and we still colonize because the colonization is in your head, mm-hmm. you're right? Um, that's the deepest root of colonization, the psychology, okay. the mind. So it's not like our problems are going to disappear overnight by us becoming sovereign and free. There's a lot of work that we have to do, but to, to start that work, right? To really uh, manifest that work for real and common progress, um, we, have to, we should be sovereign and independent, right? But that option being there, man, it complicates everything. And it, it's silly to me that the House of Representatives of the empire that's colonizing Puerto Rico is saying that this option of you guys voting for this would solve all your issues. You know, it, I think is yeah. ironic. It does not make sense to me um, because colonization is illegal internationally, right? Mm-hmm. And international law is, is illegal to colonize other countries, other nations. So Puerto Rico has been under this scheme of free association to confuse, right? And dress up the truth, right? Free association and the Commonwealth and all this. This is just a beautiful dress on on on, on the same you know on the same issues. Just dressing up uh, the reality of things, right? And it has confused people for a long time. And um, I'm done with it, man. I don't have patience for it any longer. I think it's nonsense, and I'm gonna call it out, man. And I know that you have similar views on that, right? So talk to me about what you think about this whole situation, this, this whole facade. So exactly what you said, right? It's uh, to confuse. <clears throat> and it's it's by design and it's always been by design but that so eso una cosa que siempre cuando Ricky lo hizo right fue fue una un proceso también para confundir la gente you either vote for this or you vote for that there was no room for anything else and then what happened oh look everybody voted for statehood no the hell they didn't what was the percentage that went out and actually voted barely any something percent <laughs> barely any barely mm-hmm. any you know, uh, and and even cuando te, ahora mismo cuando el, el partido del PIB y toda esa cosa, ¿verdad? Anybody that's willing to collaborate with the empire, what are we doing, right? So even now, right, the, everything is by design. So every plebiscite that they have had, whether it be the one that's been held in Puerto Rico by the Puerto Ricans, by the Puerto Rican government, to give to the United States to say, here, we voted already, now you accept it. Todo, it's, it's a facade. 
So at the processor, right when you when you already have it, it, it was a mixture of two bills already. So you ha already had the statehood bill. Again, now you introduce this bill with another component to it, the free association. Again, it's a confuse. But now, lo que hicieron también, eh? how are we going to confuse it even more? We're going to incorporate the diaspora into this conversation. We don't know shit. Like, like the reality is, is that nosotros, like, I'd never heard of a plebiscite over here. Like, esos son cosas que también no, no hablamos acá. Like, we don't bring those conversations to the table. Puerto Rico's having a plebiscite. I'd never in my life have had a conversation at the dinner table with my family. And like, mira, tú sabes lo que, lo que está pasando en Puerto Rico. Hay un plebiscite y esto y lo otro. Nobody's talking about that shit. Yeah. You do have your political families that do come from that. And yes, they have these conversations. Y, y que si lo otro. But it's not something that the five point whatever million Boricuas that are here in the diaspora are having this conversation. So the minute you throw in people like AOC or Nidia, again, because Nidia has this long-standing history in our communities, saying, mira, we support this bill or this conversation of, you know, the change or lo que sea, because Nidia has always straddled the fence her whole career. You know, it has been one of those things that I'll do what I need to do to stay relevant um, and I'll stay present in my community, but you straddle the fence because again, you don't want to lose your political power. You don't want to lose your stance. And these are career politicians. So everybody that I see that that is a Democrat, Republican, anything, you're still just a career politician. You use your Boricua identity as what? Your, your cape, ¿verdad? Porque eso como tú atraes los Boricua. Well, yo soy Boricua para que tú lo sepas. But the, the, the famous line, but we don't know shit about politics because it's not something that we're integrated into the fold about, neither here or there. But like Puerto Rico, la clima en Puerto Rico is very political como tal. By, mm -hmm. by, by design, by nature and everyday life, everything is very political over there. Pero people aren't being politicized because again, like you said, it's, it's a shell, it's a scheme. When you create a colony, you create a colonial government. El, el gobierno de Puerto Rico fue uno que estaba run by Americano for how long before yeah. they gifted it to us back by placing who? Muñoz Marín, ¿verdad? You used, because he was placed there. I don't care what anybody says. I don't care. One you, of the worst you, things that's ever happened to our island and our you, nation. You placed him there, right? He gave us shoes, so we placed him, we placed him there. Yeah. So, so ese, ese concepto de, that the government, y esto y lo otro, even the Puerto Rican government is for the people, even el partido PIP, todas esas cosas, it's all a facade. So when we talk about these plebiscites, it's a joke to me because, again, you're just confusing people mm -hmm. to make them believe that they have power or that their voice is going to be heard or respected, but traditionally it hasn't been, ever. Right? It, it's always a smack in the face. So when yeah. this more recent one, again, it's one that the empire is giving to us, uh, wrapped in politicians that mimic and emulate the voice that they hear in our communities. Um, so they're not genuine and they push certain agendas because it fits them. But we're not talking about the meat and potatoes. Like you said, the, the free association. Que lo diferencia? Yeah, yeah. You know what, man? And now when I read these articles about the referendum and how Republicans, not all, but the majority are against it, they just want to uh, blame Republicans for everything, right. right? That's going on with this referendum, like they do with everything else. And it's not to defend the Republicans. What I'm saying is that they're feeding into the tribalism mm -hmm. and we are being used, right? And as an instrument of this um, United States tribalism between the liberals and the conservatives, I'm not going to say the left and the right, because that does not make any sense. Right. Liberals are not from the left. I don't see them organizing the working class. You know, they're not anarchists, they're not socialists, and they're not communists. Mm -hmm. So please stop with the nonsense. I, I, I'm exactly. done with it, right? It doesn't exactly. make any sense. That's the true left, right? When you see the political spectrum, you see the, the far left is communist, socialist, or anarchist, right? And there's differences between them. In the far right, you have fascism, which I believe this country is, is moving towards to. Yeah, definitely. And, and the thing is that people are not used to seeing liberal fascism. That's the problem, right? We all think that fascists are conservatives. And it's not true. You scratch a liberal enough and you will see uh, fascists come out, right? Cancel culture. And the thing is, in Puerto Rico, we live in a bubble. We live in a bubble. We do great things. We are great peoples. We're really intelligent, really talented, right? Especially musically. Like, we're talented in a lot of areas. But if there's one thing I have to take out and say, man, we need to work on this, it's political education, mm -hmm. right? Because without that, we, we won't be able to organize uh, economically or politically. So the problem is that in Puerto Rico, the politics that we understand, right, is those colonial parties, 
Right. And you mentioned PEEP, right? For people that do not understand, you know, um, which parties we're talking about. El PEEP is el Partido Independentista Puertorriqueño, right? This is the uh, colonial party in Puerto Rico that wants independence, supposedly, right? But they participate in the elections in a colony, which doesn't make any sense. When it comes to, you know, the political parties in Puerto Rico, you have the representation of statehood. Con el Partido Nuevo Progresista, right? Mm -hmm. They represent statehood. Then you have el Partido Popular Democrático. In my opinion, one of the worst things that's ever happened to Puerto Rican politics because um, they represent the colonial status and they want to uh, believe it. in the facade, right? And, 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 and convince people that the free associated state is a real thing and a, a thing that works, right? Really dangerous. And then you have El Peep, like I mentioned, which uh, represents the uh, independence, supposedly, right? But now you have other parties too, como eh, eh, Victoria Ciudadana. I don't know what the hell they represent. You know, I'm not interested. Un arroz con culo. Yeah, un arroz A mess, you know? Una verdadera mogolla, right? So we don't really know what they represent, right? And they try to play this game of, of let's see who wins more votes, right? Let's see what narrative would be digestible for the nation, for them to believe in me, right? No, nah, we need to really talk about the truth. And the truth is that it does not make sense me participating in democratic elections in, in a colonial institution, right. you know, because col colonies are imposed. Colonies are a, some sort of dictatorship, right? Uh, portrayed by the empire, right? So how is it possible that I'm going to free myself from something imposed by an empire Right. through elections it doesn't make any any sense to me right and uh we need to have that conversation we need to have that conversation and really understand how can we organize right and and what are the solutions right because i'm tired of pointing fingers too right, because the thing is that we can point the fingers to the u.s empire all we want but in the end of the day who put you in the pit right. you have to look inward and rise and really organize and understand how the hell you're going to get out of that pit politically economically as a nation, and I feel that as Puerto Ricans, we need to uh, mature, right? It's time to us to grow up as a nation and understand what we need and we and, and how we could uh, manifest our own future. Because if not, we're going to have a huge problem, man. And I think it has to do a lot with that nationhood, right? That, that development mm -hmm. uh, psychologically and spiritually, right? Because we also have issues with, with what makes a Puerto Rican. Right. right? Uh, some Puerto Ricans do not want to accept, you know, that African heritage, for example, right? Well, That's manifested in a lot of ways. And if you do not accept a really important uh, element of your nation or national composition, you don't know who you are. Right. You don't know who y you are. Y también viene en, en ese mismo contexto, ¿verdad? Es how la isla también views this diaspora. Um, porque una, un, una cosa de verdad que cuando they look at us, um, this is one of my, my biggest uh, critiques and one of my biggest pet peeves and something that really grinds my gears. Um, esa, esa cosa de que we're not Puerto Rican enough porque somos de acá. Um, and then when you really look at history and you break, and this is why it's very important for us to understand our history and And even pues para la isla, porque como la historia, después cuando uno se va, cuando uno brinca el charco, it's not really captured anymore. But la, we keep living, porque we keep living, y eso es la cuestión, pero no nos quita esa entidad boricua, ¿verdad? Que that created us or that, that brought us here, because sin, sin la madre isla, no hay ninguno de nosotros. Whether it's here, whether it's there, if there is no island, if there is no Puerto Rico, no hay Puerto Rican, neither side. Um, so even how we're viewed as the diaspora, um, again, we, we've contributed a lot to raising awareness, to raising uh, the voice of the island. Pero en la misma aspect, like our history is also, uh, I would say, deemed not important sometimes um, by the island because, again, it's, it's by design. También. We don't know y'all. <laughs> so, eso, eso la cosa, ¿verdad? Si yo no te conozco a ti, why should I care? So, there's no real interchange of history and culture between us, uh, even though culture, yes, uh, in, in certain elements, but, look, uh, but history, there's no real interchange in history other than somos boricua, we know that we're Puerto Rican, pero we're less than because we're out here, or we're less than, because like you said, that, that whole, we don't speak Spanish, or whatever the case may be. Um, so, it, it's a... In that decolonization, it's reprocessing that relationship 
uh, porque un lado no puede existirse en el otro. Um, and then even that whole reality of you have people that are coming to the island now, ¿verdad? And in 15, 25 years from now, they're going to have kids, ¿verdad? Y no, no son nothing Puerto Rican. But like you have you have the the Jake Paul, Paul Ryan, whatever the hell them people are called, que están llegando a la isla y que se están apropiando de todo, son Puerto Rican, ¿verdad? Because now, look at me, I'm Puerto Rican, right? I live here now, I'm, I'm creating organizations. In 15, 20 years, when we forget the bullshit that they brought with them, ¿verdad? Son Puerto Rican, los hijos de ellos son nacidos aquí, son criados aquí, mira, hablan español. And that's the biggest thing that pisses me off is that that's Spanish. Ellos hablan español como acá, ellos son de acá, son criados acá. And no, motherfucker, they're not. Like, mm -hmm. they, they may have been born there and raised there, but their interest and, and how they view the island is very much different than mucha de la gente en la diáspora que llegamos siglo being thrown out of our island because we can't either afford it because the economy is literally in a chokehold by the U.S. where we're not allowed to create certain revenues of of economy for us, for commerce, for us, for the people, for the island. And then we talk about tourism and the whole concept of, of tourism is the be all end all. And it's also taking a look at who has control in tourism, who has the biggest state. Hablando del clasismo, because también el clasismo es algo importante que hay que hablar. Because there's Boricuas coming to the diaspora now that have never struggled a day in their life. Que vienen con dinero, que están llegando a cierta comunidad and they're fine. Um, so yeah, it's, it's one of those things that inter, that interchange in history, uh, it needs to be had so that we can actually progress um, and organize effectively. We can't organize if one side is doing one thing and one side is doing the other thing. That's right. And the problem that I have with these elections, it gives the bourgeoisie time to organize or reorganize or reconfigure what uh, their agenda right? Mm -hmm. And um, the bourgeoisie in Puerto Rico is a colonial one, and they're not interested in changing the status no, in sorry. any way or form. All they want to do is make more money for themselves and their friends and their families. So it's, it makes no sense to me that people that are for statehood still believe in, in that political party that represents, you know, that, that choice of, of statehood, right? Because that political party has been caught stealing right and scheming against the federal government for so much money the thing is that i don't know how people in puerto rico are like okay yeah i voted for el pnp i voted for this political party but in the end of the day don't you see the contradiction of how they go ahead and disrespect all those funds that they receive for help right they just steal and steal and steal they're notorious for that but then you have El Partido eh, Popular Democrático. They don't want to decide which side of the fence do you want to be at, right? Which side of the uh, railroad, right, you want to be at? Because if you're in the middle, you're going to get ran over. Mm -hmm. You either run to the left or you run to the, to the right because you ain't jumping over the train either, exactly. right? So what, are, what is your choice, right? Entonces viene el peep for independence. I truly believe, and this is something that I may get backlash for, but I don't give a damn. I truly believe that El Partido Independentista Puerto Rican, it was made to break apart the independent movement. How is that? You have the radicals on one side in Albizu Campos, right? And other folks like Juan Antonio Correjel that were radical. These people were radical, okay? But now let's create this political party so people think that they would have to vote to reach that goal. So what you did was you broke apart the whole independent movement more than it already was. Right, Concepcion de Gracia founded this uh, political party, but I have the document of when the party was founded, and his signature is nowhere to be found. Mm -hmm. Okay, and when you read the language on that document, it shows how you could go ahead and work under the framework, right, of of the empire. Let's let's go ahead. Puerto Rico now is, is sovereign until a certain extent. You can vote for your for your uh, political party, right, and you can reach the goals that you want by using this uh, process of, of voting. And then it was saying how you cannot use any firearms to reach your goals. You cannot organize uh, militarily for this. Let's work under this framework and you'll be able to reach your, your destination. And it's, it's all BS, man, and fragmented. I understand there's a lot of people that vote for this political party for independence that really want Puerto Rico to be free. But there is a lack of political understanding. Puerto Rico has a lot of work to do because it's not only as an independent country trying to organize for a better future. Is that you have to become uh, sovereign and free first. 
you have to grow up as a nation first. Right. You have to uh, understand international politics and see how you fit in, right? Because you're still a colony and there's other colonies as well. We have to like advocate for these other nations too. And um, I'm an internationalist, right? I think um, nationalism is dangerous sometimes. Very much you know, so. it could get to a point where there's a thin line between extreme nationalism and and xenophobia and you know and fascism and being discriminatory against other peoples right um chauvinism too so there's a thin line there so you have to be careful and the bourgeoisie in puerto rico are are not interested in puerto rico's uh progress right and um i've never seen it you know it's not it hasn't manifested in any way shape or form puerto rico has never um lived uh, or seen uh, economic development, for example, you know, that increase or that um, creation of capital has been sent over to the headquarters in the U.S. of any company that uh, is American, you know, in, 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 Port in Puerto Rico, in the island. That's what Operation Booster was all about, to make people believe that Puerto Rico is going through uh, economic it's development. Economic and it wasn't. Growth. Free association happened at the same time. Mm -hmm. uh, Operation Bootstrap, but one of the biggest migrations of Puerto Ricans happened during that time. So how can you tell me that Puerto Rico was developing economically when a lot of people were leaving the island because they couldn't make it? Right. You know, it doesn't make any sense. So And going back to Bootstrap, right? Because again, uh, side note, I'm with the diaspora. Yeah. Right? With Bootstrap, and when we, when we talk about the whole creation of Bootstrap, again, it was white Americans <laughs> collaborating with white Americans, and then you had your Puerto Ricans in the background that were, you know, whatever. Pero al fin del día fue una programa creado for contracted labor, right? There was quotas that needed to be met. When you really break down the meat and potatoes of Operation Bootstrap and you really start reading, mm -hmm. uh, it was there was a book that uh, I was reading that kind of talks on it a little bit. Um, y es el libro sobre uh, from Puerto Rico to Philadelphia, um, and it talks about the post-war uh, economic uh, growth of the United States and how we were utilized as that growth, right? Because we also another thing is to, and this is why I talk about pulling off the veil and we're not apart. Uh, when we came here, again, it was contracted labor. Uh, it was through this fake government because it was a fake government that was being implemented in Puerto Rico that was collaborating with the imperial government. And But when we came here, right, the conditions were so poor. And then when we talk about like politicians, this is also why even here in the diaspora, where we also need to move away from this concept of you put a Boricua in power, que ellos son para nosotros. And, and again, with the WEPA culture or the Yo Soy Boricua culture, that's how they captivate us. ¿verdad? Una de esas cosas que, oh, mira, esa persona es Boricua, yo no sé tres carajos de, de, de politics, pero esa persona es Boricua, ellos son para mí. And they're mm -hmm. not. Right, they're not because also we're not the majority in a lot of these communities that they end up serving or being empowered to. So we're not a priority. And although you're Boricua and you're this, we're not a priority in the grand scheme. You are a politician for the empire, which is the larger picture. You're gonna do what's in the best interest for the empire, not for the people, regardless of what, what the color of the people are, creed of the people are. So with Operation Bootstrap and how we even came to be in the, the United States, it was contracted labor. We were sent here through contracted labor and people escaped that contracted labor or they got stuck or whatever the case may be. Eso creo la diapora. Pero también creo esa, 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 uh, this mindset of a political system because then people started joining those political systems porque necesitamos el cambio acá. Because the reality is too, it get, when we talk about free association and all this other shit, y el dinero and economic colonialism, ¿verdad? because lo que tienen en Puerto Rico es economic colonialism. Uh, the United States literally has stripped us, the stripped Puerto Rico of this ability, again, to create one, their own ECOM. And again, to create avenues of pathway that can generate capital for the people, by the people. So you have this power over everything. We have to ask you permission for everything. And when we come here, it's the same shit. Right, we end up in these communities where we have to ask them for permission. We have to do all of these things, or we have to abide by the laws that they created or set for us. Cuando pasó lo que pasó con en Puerto Rico sobre the the whole question of bankruptcy, right? No. Somos parte del Estado Unido until we create things that contradict the empire and their ability to say no, you can't do that unless we say you can do that, and we say you can't. Because yeah. why? We're the ones that were benefiting off of that money. Yeah, in debt because of us. So why are we going to wipe your debt away when? We're the ones that created that debt. So it's it's funny, man. It's funny because the thing is, this is what I tell people all the time. If you have 
a colonial institution in play or in place, anything constructed upon that foundation is not legitimate at all. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that includes the elections in Puerto Rico. That includes the debt in Puerto Rico. That includes all these um, tax exempt laws because I'm looking towards the future. I have a little bit of a futurist within me, um, even though I'm careful with that. I'm careful with that because sometimes we tend as human beings, right, to suffer the future, right. suffer things that haven't happened yet, right? And it robs you from your present. But in the end of the day, I would like to look into the numbers. I would like to look into the stats. How is our population doing right now? Is it decreasing? Is it increasing? Including the diaspora, including in the island. And the island is decreasing and it's getting older by the day, right? Right. Um, and... How is Puerto Rico going to look in 25 years, 50 years? Because we talk about Puerto Rico and what does Puerto Rico look like in 25, 50 years. It looks like the Lincoln Center in Manhattan. It's gone, right? Había una comunidad afroamericano y boricua that lived literally where a whole museum of art was created for not who? Not for us, not for the people of our communities, not for the black and brown people, not for your average New Yorker, but for a specific class of people. So again, when we talk about what does Puerto Rico look like in 25 years, it looks like the Lincoln Center. It looks completely flattened. There's nothing there. There is no us. There is no culture. We don't know how to connect and we need to reconnect. We need to find pathways back to these identities, back to these communities. And it's not about nationalism because like you said, nationalism in general is very dangerous. Very dangerous. Not that it can be dangerous, it's very fucking dangerous. Yeah. When we talk about the Boricua community and we talk about nationalism, I'm hearing a lot of stuff that sounds very similar to Zionism and these birthright trips and returning back because what we're not talking about is how your average Boricua, again, we're, we're not talking about class. We're not talking about class privilege. The sure. average Boricua, I grew up here. I came from a family that's poor as shit. Mm -hmm. My family's still poor as shit. I'm poor as shit. I don't have the luxury of being like, oi, yo me voy a levantar y me voy para Puerto Rico. I'm going to go buy terreno or my family has terreno that I can go live on. I don't have that privilege. I have family there that I can go live on their couch if I really was about it or if I really wanted to go back. But I mean, there's things that we have to understand is that building community with the diaspora and the island is very important because not all 5 million plus Boricuas are going to want to go back to the island. The reality is that we have struggles here that either we can't make it back to the island because economically we can't, financially, you know, we, we can't set aside that money or also the family ties, communities that we built here because yeah. that's the reality too is that we built these things here. And that's again, right. as at the same time that Puerto Rico is being attacked, we're being attacked here. Our enclaves are gone here, just like they're being stripped in Santulsa and they're being changed and model and modernized and all this other shit. Yo, yo me crié en Bushwick, puppy. Like my family was born into Bushwick. We came from Puerto Rico and that was there. Everybody started popping out kids in Bushwick. <laughs> like, nosotros somos criado y, y nacido en Bushwick. And Bushwick now, I have an aunt that still lives there. We grew up in a building where both sides of the building, habían ocho apartamentos en cada lado. Literally every apartment was occupied by somebody in my family. Okay. Mm. Again, my entire family was displaced in one shot and sent over here. So we all lived in one building. And now in that building, I only have one cousin. Porque gentrificación comió ese building. Now rent in that apartment is almost $3,000. Que mi abuelita, cuando ella llegó a ese apartamento, papi, ella pagaba 300 pesos. $300 my grandmother used to pay when she got there. The other day I went to the store y un galón de agua, papi, cuatro pesos. Here in New York, $4 for a gallon of water. Water. <laughs> water. Que una I, remember, I remember when I used to drink water off the water holes in Buffalo, New York. Really quick, most important, take that veil off, man. Take that veil off and understand that these systems are in your friend and the community is the most important. Um, re reorganize yourselves, man. That's, that's the most important thing. Reorganize yourself. Look inward. Look towards your community. Your community is, is going to be the most important thing that we need, especially in these days uh, and how things are looking futuristically. <laughs> but yeah, that's it. Beautiful, Timothy. Thank you for being on it, my friend. And uh, let this be the first of many. And uh, where can people find you in social media? Um, so you can find me on IG, uh, Nuestra Patria, uh, PR, Nuestra underscore Patria, uh, PR. Uh, other than that, yeah, always hit me up there. I'm always uh, good for a good dialogue. I do answer back. Sometimes it might take me some time to get back to y'all, but but I do uh, I do appreciate feedback and I do like to converse with people. Yeah, beautiful. Thank you for being on, man. And uh, 
Let's keep it pushing.